you've just ordered the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone or it's just arrived and you want to know how to register it, how to set up the remote controller in the drone and get it airborne for your first flight, then in this video we're going to cover all of that. So let's get into it. First of all, the big question about registering drones. So in 2021, the CAA brought out new rules and regulations for drones. And these are below 250 grams, so the rules are much more relaxed. So basically, you do need to register for an operator's ID, but not a flyer's ID. So I've got a link down below to the CAA website where you just do your registration there. It's very short, very easy, take you a few minutes, and then that's all you need to do there. Secondly, you need to create your account with DJI. Again, there's a link down below with your email and a password. Uh, just create an account with DJI, and that'll just make it simpler when you come to set up the radio controller known as the RC. Next the step is to download the DJI Fly app onto uh, your mobile phone. And that's really useful because that will give you any updates um, and fly zone restrictions. You always look at that, whether you're using that to fly the drone or using the radio controller, it's good to have that and it makes sure that app is up to date. I would recommend is, a, is an app called Dronecast. Dronecast is really great because it gives you weather conditions for whatever area you set and it'll tell you the flying conditions, it'll give you the wind speeds, the weather conditions and it will recommend whether it's good for flying a drone or not. Next you need to obviously charge up your uh, remote controller and your drone and quite simply, there's a USB slot uh, in the back to charge the RC controller. The drone can also be ch charged by putting in the uh, USB-C cable into the back here, or you can remove the batteries and put them on a charger. The next step is to turn on the drone and the RC controller. So I would suggest you um, take the legs out. So the top ones you pull straight backwards. The bottom ones, they kind of, if you turn them down, they will come out. So you tilt down and come out. Now with these, you can do them in either order, the front or the back, it doesn't matter. You turn these on by pressing down once, then hold it for four seconds. And the same here, press down once and hold it for four seconds. These will both fire up. They will automatically sync with each other out of the box. So then next you need to go through the steps of setting up the RC controller. Now note, by the time you've gone through this whole process, the batteries get quite hot in here. It does rely on wind speed to cool these down. So if this turns itself off at some point, don't be too worried about that. It's quite normal. Um, either just let it cool down and restart it. Uh, or put a fresh battery in can also do that. So just going through um, what you'll expect to see when you've launched uh, this and you're first setting up the controller. It'll first of all ask you um, the language that you use. Um, it'll ask you to agree to the terms, the country you're in. Then you're next, you'll connect your Wi-Fi and then you'll put in your time zone. And then on the next screen, you go through to the login details. And because you've already created those, you just put in those same email and password that you use to create your DJI account. So you put that in and then you can click activate. It will give you a quick tutorial on uh, what the different buttons do to get yourself flying and it'll show you with the joystick, the left hand one will be, if you push it forward, it'll take the drone up. If you push it backwards, it'll take it down. And if you move right, it will look to the right. And if you turn it left, it will look to the left. And with the right hand stick, if you push it forward, it will fly the drone forward. Backwards, it will fly it backwards. 
If you push it to the right, it will just traverse to the right and left, it will just move to the left, but still facing the same direction as if you were, had it on a slider. At the front, it shows you that you have your video record button, you're taking a photo button, and these wheels will um, tilt the gimbal up and down, and this wheel will zoom it in and out. You have controls underneath that are C1 and C2 buttons that you can program and out the box they correct the gimbal into straight forward or tilt down mode and on the right hand side the C2 button will turn the gimbal into portrait mode which is a new feature on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. This button on the left is the return to home button or pause button. If you uh, can't see your drone and you want it to come back to you, you hold this down and it will bring it up to 100 meters, fly directly over above your home point and lower it straight down. And it is pretty accurate. I've tested this now a few times and it's very accurate. And uh, this is obviously the power on off button and you've got your cinematic normal or sport mode and that's just how responsive the drone will be. In cinematic mode it's a, a bit smoother um, but that said it's still quite quick so use the joysticks gently. So that's just a very quick basic overview of these controls. The next thing it'll do is ask you to do a software update which can take a little while so be patient. I'll just fast forward through this a little bit. So that's it, you're all set up. You can hit the go fly button. You'll be able to see on your RC controller screen through the lens of the drone, and you can see you're all set up, ready to go. So let's take it outside and we'll do our first flight and we'll just basically use the automatic takeoff button and the return to home button so you can just safely get yourself in the air and return back without any problems while you're getting used to your new drone. So let's get outside and take a look. We've set up our DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now we're going to give it its first launch. So we've got all our accessory kit here and we've also got the landing mat which we're going to be using to, to launch it from. So we're going to just put this together and uh, try out the controls. At first we're just going to keep it all on the um, factory settings which pretty much is automatic uh, ISO and um, shutter speed and everything so we're going to use that and the uh, automatic uh, auto white balance we're going to use all those settings just while we get used to the controls we've also got our wind speed indicator here so we're just going to test our speed okay so we're low down in the valley here we were in a bit of a dip we're quite protected we've got about six miles an hour i reckon as i come up on the ridge it's going to be about 10 and that's about 100 foot i'm probably nearer 15 miles per hour and probably nearer getting more towards its limit especially if i get any gusts so we're not going to uh push it too much today so we're going to use this nice strap that came with the accessory kit that we just clip onto these nice little screw in eyes now we're able to just use this hands free. Right, so we're going to launch the uh, Mini 3 now. So we're just going to press uh, automatic launch. So there's a little symbol here with an up arrow and you can see it says take off and this should make it take off to 1.2 meters. Like so. Let me go up by pushing this forward and bring it down. and then it can come back towards me and I can hear the avoidance kicking in so what we can also do here is we have 
cine mode, normal, and sport mode. So if we just put it in cine mode, everything will happen a lot slower. So now as we move up, it'll do it more gently. Just move forward. Sideward. So now I'm just changing the angle of what I can see. There we go, that's better. And then we're just going to move to the right, move to the left. Whoa, hits the brakes nicely. And then we should be able to look to the left. Yeah. So we should be able to draw a square around ourselves and it will lock on to us now, as it goes up it will keep us in shot moving right and left it's very agile okay so that seems to all be working really successfully we've got used to the controls now we've got the forwards backwards we've got to, to lock on to our subject so now i'm just going to take it around the lake and uh, see how this thing flies it seems to be coming in quite efficiently we're not even in sport mode it's coming into wind quite quite nicely you've got to kind of realize it's facing you that actually your controls are kind of backwards the beauty the beautiful thing with this gimbal is it has such a huge range on target well i'm really happy with that that was a very successful first uh, flight um you managed to put it through uh, just little paces there try all these different functions out it's worked really well um i definitely want to get it out of auto um on the uh exposure settings because i did notice whether it's um, pointing at the ground or at an object in the distance the exposure was changing which I think for filmmaking that's really not going to work for me but for a quick setup, um, run and gun uh, that was absolutely fantastic so let's go back inside and uh, take a look at uh, the rest of what this thing does so as you can see we we're out there it was windy and not really the best day to take it up and fly it around some buildings and landscapes but it was a good opportunity just to get this airborne and try out the controls obviously what you noticed is you do need to take into account the weather which is why i recommended the dronecast app and you need to really be thinking about um, how your drone will respond the higher you fly it because the wind speeds will increase with height so in future videos we will be talking about weather conditions i'm an ex-paraglider pilot and so um, my awareness of wind conditions and planning around that um, are quite advanced. So we'll look at that and we'll talk about that more in future videos. So right now, let's just have a look at uh, a still image and a bit of video footage just to see what we got out of the box here. So as you can see, automatically set up with shooting images in JPEG. The quality looks pretty nice. I'm really pleased with that. That said, it's much crisper in the center of the image. I can see some slight softness and stretching around the edges, a little bit of vignetting. Now let's take a look at the video footage, which I'm really pleased with that. That's a lovely clean image. So all the exposure levels are set automatically, as well as the um, color profiles. And so straight out the box, that's pretty decent. I did notice whether I've got the drone pointing at the ground and then it comes up and shows the skyline and the sky that the uh, exposure is changing too much for me the suddenly you know the landscape you still want to be seen uh, becomes very dark so obviously you can work with that in post-production you'd be better in the raw format which is decent link uh, otherwise um, I would want to be just setting those exposures so they're locked in for the actual flight I'm doing at the time so that's just something to think about going forward I hope you found this really useful and it's got you up running and out there so 
stay tuned, subscribe to the channel as we roll out a whole load more videos on our drone footage and using the new Sony A7R5. So thank you and I'll see you in the next one.